Franz Tortilla Flat by John Steenbeck, a novel by John Steenbeck, Tortilla Flat. Uh, so Tortilla Flat is the name of a town uh, above beautiful Monterey lived a group of men called Pisanos. Pisanos, they were drunkards, thieves, ruffians, and vagabond, but they were also surprisingly good-hearted, requiring little more from life than friendship and a little wine. Among these Pisanos were Danny, Pilon, Pablo, Jesus Maria, and Big Joe Portagi. When the First World War broke out, these Pisanos decided to enlist in a fear of drunken patriotism. None of them actually made it anywhere near combat and soon returned to Mon Monterey to find it more or less as they had left it. One thing was different, however, when they returned back. Danny's grandfather had died and left Danny two houses. Pilon is the first to find Danny after the war, and Danny allows his friends to rent the other house fr from him. Gradually, the rest of the group turns up, and Pilon convinces them to rent rooms in the second house. One night, after a good amount of wine, the house burns down, and though Danny is angry at first. He allows the friends to move in with him. At Danny's house, they form a group, which Steenbeck often compares to the Knights of the Round Table. Indeed, they engage in many quests, some noble and some downright sinful, enjoying companionship and the comfort of a roof to the fullest. Most of the group's quests revolve around the accusation of money, but in one case they find a new friend instead. There was a Pisano in town named the Pirate who was somewhat slow-witted. He could be seen walking the street and pursuing the restaurant for scraps with five dogs, his best friends and protectors. He chewed wood every day and sold it for a quarter in town. Pelon noticed that the pirate never spent any money and deduced that he must be hiding it somewhere. Pelon follows the boom all over trying to locate the slash, going so far as to invite him to stay in Danny's house so that they can keep a better watch over him. In living with the pirate, the friends grow compassionate for him. However, and one day the pirate simply turns over the money to the friends so that it will be safe. The large bag of the coins become the symbolic center of the friendship. As the months pass, many more stories accumulate around the group. And on St. Andrew's Eve, Pilon and Big Joe think they have found treasure, but it turns out to be a signpost for a geological survey. There are affairs with women, but the companionship within the group is much stronger than the affection any of them have for women. In the end, the romantic Pisano returns to the group, having learned Relearned this lesson, in many cases, the Pisano provided a service to a needy party. One time they house and feed a distraught caporal from the Mexican army with his baby when the two have nowhere else to go. Another time they saved the large family of Sinora. Teresina Cortes from salvation, starvation 
when the local bean crop fails. Sometimes there is wine and sometimes there is food, but there is always the pleasure that each of them receive from the company of the others. Eventually, the pirate reaches his goal of 1,000 quarters and buys a golden candlestick from San Francisco. The friends have a small party from this occasion uh, with hamburger, meat and wine brought from the plunder of a downcast coast guard ship. When there is nothing going on, they rather spend their days in philosophical discussion of town gossip, enjoying the sun on their front porch. Often the stories are scandalous, but there is always a lesson to be learned from them. The monotony of the Pisano's way of life and the way of property ownership begins to wear on Danny. However, for a month, he sits on the porch with his friend, brooding over memories of night sleeping in the forest and the infinitely better taste of stolen food. In the end, the weight is too much and Danny gives into to his desire to re-experience his youth. He disappears into the woods and goes on a month-long crime spree. He steals from everyone, including the members of his own household. Husband all over the town call for vengeance for what he has done to their wives, and the police swear that he will be arrested on sight for his vandalism and fighting. Mr. Torelli, the wine merchant, even produces a note that Danny has signed authorizing the sale of the house for $25. Luckily, the merchant did not think to make a backup copy and the Pisanos quickly dispose of the original. When the Danny finally returned, he is tired and pleased with the fun he has made. He has had but the growing sense of age is still with him. Seeing their friend and their host in such a state, the friends of the house decide to, to cure him with a party. For the first time in their life, the five along with the Tito Ralph, the jailer, the Johnny Pom Pom go to work in the squid yard. Words of this earth shattering even quietly spread through Tortilla Flat, and soon it leaked that they are trying to make money to have a party. The whole town gets behind their effort, preparing food, digging up long save bows, and buying wine and decoration. At 4.30, Danny gets up and goes for a walk in the direction of the Monterey, and while he's gone, neighbors swarm on the house, decorating it at 30, 5.30. The seven friends walk home with 14 gallons of wine brought with their day's wages. They set out to find Danny and get the party started. Pelon and Pablo find him gloomily standing on the dark pyre in Mon Monterey, Pablo later swear that he saw an earthly black bird hanging over Danny's hat. When they give Danny word of the party, is inaugurated and the three race back up the hill to get things started. It is said that Danny drank three gallons of wine by himself that night, and no woman in town would admit that he passed her up in his marathon of a fear. The party became legendary for its greatness. Everyone in the whole town was there, and they danced so hard that the floor of the house caved in at points. More than 30 gallons of wine and keg of potato whiskey were consumed. Unfortunately, the night ended in tragedy after the good-natured fights that ritually accompanied a night of drinking. Danny was not finished. He picked up a, a table leg and challenged the entire world to a fight. When no one took the challenge, he charged outside, screaming that if 
No one would fight him, then he would pit himself against an enemy worthy of his effort. Danny plum plummeted to fatal wounds in the 40-foot drop to the bottom of gulch behind his house. No one was sure what really happened, but everyone was sure that they had heard Danny fighting with some supernatural enemy before he let out his last scream of defiance. Danny's funeral is public debacle of fine clothes, stolen flowers, and military splendor. The Paisanos cannot attend, however, for they enter the proceeding in the poor clothes. It would be a disgrace for Danny's memory. Instead, they watch from afar until they cannot stand the sorrow any longer and burst into tears. That night, they drink more wine and talk fondly of Danny's memory. They sing songs that he liked and smoke cigar provided by Tito Ralph. As Pelon attempts to relight one of the cigar, the match fluttered out of his hand and ignites a newspaper in the corner. At first, they all get up to stamp the fire out, but they change their mind. The house dies as Danny did in one last blaze of glory, when there is nothing but ashes left, the friends depart, each going a separate way. So this is the story of the Tortilla Flat by John Steenbeck. So this, the title of this novel is Tortilla Flat, author John Steenbeck back fictional novel novel of california experiencing it is time and place written 1935 and it is published also in 1935 so setting time of this novel is primarily post world war one with the preface occurring before the war during prohibition Setting place Tortilla Flat, California, above the town of Monterey. Protagonist of this novel is Danny. Major conflict, free living versus comfort and age. Rising action, the Pisanos partake in several adventures in which they help the poor rob the rich and drink lots of wine. Danny's melancholy grows throughout. Climax of this novel is Danny's party, falling action, Danny's funeral. Themes of this is the beauty of simple things, Emerson in the landscape, spirituality. So this is the story of the Tortilla Flat by John Steenbeck. I hope you will enjoy this novel. Thank you.